Well, hi friends, welcome back to that 1870s homestead. I am Todd and for the first time in probably three months you get to see me film a video without a hat on. <laughs> Finally got my hair cut. Rachel did it up nice for me. In all seriousness, today we are going to do our annual spring care and feeding of our blueberries. We have 12 blueberry bushes. I don't remember the kinds. There's two different varieties. Rachel knows, but she's not home right now. As you can see, they're really, really bloomed out well. I have a lot of bees, bumblebees and my bees, um, cruising around pollinating them, which is cool. Um, but much like Rachel did recently with one of her videos, she posted about every spring, this is what I do to my strawberry bed. Same type of thing. Every spring, this is what we do to our blueberry bushes. So the one thing we address every spring is weed pressure. When we planted these blueberries a couple years ago, we put down a nice layer of landscape fabric and we wood chip them really, really heavily like this thick. And that lasted us for about two years before the weeds really started to come back. Last year, we put on a thick, thick layer of straw, or yeah, straw. Um, and it worked pretty well. We did that after we weeded in the spring, put a thick layer of straw and that lasted most of the year. And as you can see this year, they're back and they're back with the vengeance, especially this purple dead nettle stuff is everywhere. So I guess the first thing that we're gonna do today is address the weed situation. Normally we come through and we pull these, but I don't think it's gonna work this time. We fortunately yesterday we had about a half an inch of rain, maybe three quarters of an inch of rain. So all this, this straw material down here is wet. Most of the weeds are kind of dry now, which is fine. But I think I'm gonna flame weed this year. And Rachel was kind of worried about the flame weeding, but I think I have a solution on how to protect the blueberries while harming the weeds. So I know that there's absolutely no way I'm gonna be able to safely burn the stuff that's right around the base with, uh, with the flame weeder. Some of that's gonna have to be done by hand, I understand. I wanna remove the bulk of this in a, in a quick and efficient manner. So I took a couple pieces, I took a couple pieces of wood and I put some hinges on them. Hoping I could set it up like this and protect the plant, flame weed around it, shift my shield, flame weed around it. to go pretty well if you've never flame weeded before don't feel like you need to totally turn whatever plant it is you're trying to kill black and char it um, it doesn't really take that much heat to to kill a plant um, the process behind it basically you plants are, are mostly water just like we are and when it gets that hot the cell structure ruptures ultimately killing the plant it'll take a few days and you might have to come back and flame it again in another week or two but it doesn't really take a whole lot of flaming to kill a plant. So my little wooden shield seemed to work quite well. Some of the plants have like these little black stuff at the ends, but it's not for me. I think it was from the frost that one night. It's like just the tips of every little branch have that. Protected well, I'm gonna have to hand weed some of this bottom part, except for this big giant dandelion. 
some of the straw was way drier than I thought it was and caught on fire a lot so I had to do a lot of stomping but you can see a lot of this stuff is already um, starting to die just from that it's like all slimy and so at the end of this video I'm gonna come back out here in the next day or two and I'll, I'll film some footage of how it looks now that it's sat for a few days just so you can see how how effective flame weeding can be so this was step one to our spring uh, blueberry maintenance routine that we use step number two is fertilizer and what we've been using every year is this acid mix from uh, the down-to-earth people and all we really do is we'll take about half a cup of this fertilizer and we'll sprinkle it around the base of the plant and I specifically waited till today to do this I some of the bo the blooms and the blossoms on the on them are a little farther along than I would have liked um, ideally I wanted to get the fertilizer on there maybe a week ago but I only have so much time but why today because the next three days between the next three days coming up, we got an inch and a half to two inches of rain coming. So that'll help get the fertilizer down into the ground, down into the roots, help it dissolve. Make for healthy plants. Well, it's not a couple days later as I planned. I've been out working all day. I've been mowing the back here Oh, basically almost the whole yard. There's a couple spots that are just too wet. But when I was mowing, you could see really good evidence of kind of what went on here. Things are pretty crispy. All this uh, dead nettle stuff just shriveled right up. But you can see some spots where I missed. I didn't get this one very good. Although, got kind of pretty toasted there. But yeah, all this is just going to die now. And I, I tried to do out to the, to the edge a little bit. Some of this grass is like this. Some of this stuff is, uh, you got to hit it twice. This stuff can be really resilient. But you can see down in here where the blueberry, I had it protected with the wood. All this stuff is still alive down in here. So I think I, my little board that I used did a good job protecting the blueberries. So we've only been growing these blueberries for about three years now. So if you're an experienced blueberry farmer and you've got some tips to share with me, things that we didn't already cover in this video, leave them down in the comments. I'd love to check them out. Same goes for weed prevention. You guys got any ideas for me? Let me know. See you in the next one.